Hey guys, welcome back to the Kubernetes series. In the Kubernetes volumes chapter of the series, we deployed MongoDB with a single replica using deployments. But to achieve high availability and enhance overall performance and reliability, we should deploy multiple replicas. As MongoDB is a stateful application, we cannot use regular deployment resources to deploy multiple replicas. In this chapter, we will understand the differences between stateful and stateless applications and how to deploy stateful applications in Kubernetes using stateful sets with complete hands-on. So without any further delay, let's get started. Let us start by understanding the differences between stateful and stateless applications. Let's say we have a simple Spring Boot application that does a simple authentication. So when a client sends a request to login, we just set authenticated flag to true in memory. When we send the same request again, we just simply read this flag and return if the user is already logged in or not. So basically we are storing the state of the current request and the next request is dependent on the state of the previous request. Such types of applications are called stateful applications as we are storing the state. In this case, authentication state. But what if you have multiple instances of the same application with a load balancer in front? Let's say first request goes to the instance 1 and we set the authenticated flag to true. Now, if the second request goes to the instance 2, it doesn't give the correct result as we didn't set the flag on instance 2. So, as a best practice, it's recommended to move the state to a database. So now, when the first time the login request is sent, we generate a token and save it in the DB. And our Spring Boot application expects this token for subsequent request and validates from the DB. So no matter how many instances we have, we will get the same result as we are not storing any state in the Spring Boot applications. As we are not storing any state in our application, our application is called stateless application and database is called a stateful application as it is storing the state. Now that we have a high level understanding of what a stateful application is, let us see the problems we face if we deploy stateful applications with multiple replicas using regular deployments. Let us start with problem number one. In the previous chapter, we deployed a single replica of MongoDB using deployment and we used persistent volume to store its data. Now to achieve high availability, we need to increase the number of replicas. When we use deployments, all replicas use same persistent volume. But in a distributed database, if we use the same persistent volume for all the replicas, all pods write to the same database which leads to data inconsistency. So the solution to this problem is to have a way to use separate persistent volume for each replica. This can be achieved using stateful sets. In stateful set, we define the volume claim template. Based on this template, separate persistent volume claims are used for each pod which creates separate persistent volumes. Please watch Kubernetes volumes chapter of this series for the detailed explanation of persistent volume claims and persistent volumes. Now let us understand the problem number two. In a typical master-slave architecture, there will be two types of nodes. One is master and the others are slaves. Master node handles both reads and writes and slave just handles the reads. So for efficient and reliable replication, the master should be up and running first and next slave one should come up and the data from the master should be copied to the slave one. Next slave two should come up and now instead of getting the data from master again, this time data should be copied from the slave one so that load on the master will be less. After this initial clone, all the slaves will continuously sync the data from master node. So to achieve this initial clone, pods should come up one by one as the data should be copied from its previous replica. But if we use deployment resource to deploy this kind of application, all the pods are created parallelly. If we deploy same application with stateful sets, pods are created one by one. Let's say we create three replicas. First, Pod 1 will be created, then once the pod 1 is ready, second pod is created, and once the second pod is ready, the third pod is created. If the first pod fails to create for any reason, the second pod will not be created. Also, when we delete the stateful set, 
the last pod is deleted first now let us understand the problem number 3 as we discussed in problem number 2 in master slave architecture all the nodes in the cluster should talk to each other for the data replication for that we need a sticky identity to find each other in the cluster sticky identity means we should be able to access each pod on a DNS and that DNS should not change even if the pod restarts. If it changes when the pod restarts, the other replicas can't find it. To achieve this, there must be a way to assign a constant name for all the pods. Meaning, even if the pod restarts, it should get the same name. That is why we call this as sticky identity. The name just sticks to the pod. But if we use regular deployment, the pod gets some random name every time it is created. And if the pod is restarted for any reason, it gets a new name. But when we deploy the same application with a stateful set, all pods get a name which can be easily predicted. The naming convention of the pods will be stateful set name iPhone and ordinal index. So for the first pod, it will be mongo-0 and for the second pod it will be mongo-1 and for the third pod it will be mongo-2. And now even if the pod restarts, the same name is given to the pod. Not only sticky identity, it gets sticky storage also. Meaning, when we use stateful set, each pod gets its own persistent volume. And when the pod is restarted, it gets attached to the same persistent volume. For this, we don't need to do anything. Stateful set takes care of it. Finally, it's not all about the pods having a fixed name and storage. As we discussed in the services section of this series, we need a service to talk to these pods. Whatever services we learned so far acts like a load balancers. Meaning, if we call the services, the request goes to a random pod. But here, we need to talk to specific pods like all writes should go to the master node and slave 1 should get the data from master and slave 2 should get the data from slave 1. So we need a way to directly talk to a pod instead of balancing our load across the pods. For this purpose, Kubernetes provides a special service called headless service. When we specify cluster IP as none, that service is called headless service. Through this service, each pod gets its DNS entry. Here, mongo-0 is the pod name and mongo is the service name, default is the namespace. So now, when we try to access this DNS, the request directly goes to the mongo-0 pod. Headless services are very helpful when you don't want to do any load balancing and want to connect to a single pod directly. Now that we have a very good understanding of what problems stateful set solves, let us summarize the differences between deployment and stateful set. Generally, deployment is used to deploy stateless applications, whereas stateful set is used to deploy stateful applications. When we use deployment, all pods are created parallelly, and when we use stateful sets, pods are created one by one. And when we scale down a deployment, a random pod is picked up and deleted, whereas when we scale down a stateful set, the last pod is deleted. In deployment, a random name is assigned to all the pods and with stateful set, a sticky and predictable name is assigned to each pod. In deployment, all the pods use the same persistent volume, whereas in the stateful set, each pod uses its own persistent volume. Finally, scaling with deployment is very easy compared to the stateful set. Enough of theory, now let us see the stateful sets in action. Let's go to VS Code and create a stateful set.yaml. Just like for any other Kubernetes resource, we need API version, kind, metadata, and spec. We can get all these details with kubectl API resources grep stateful set. As you can see, this is the API version, kind is the stateful set. And let's give the name as mongo to the stateful set and under the spec we will give the actual configuration so this configuration looks similar to the deployment with few changes here we gave the number of replicas as three 
here instead of giving persistent volume claim we are giving volume claim templates so basically here we are giving a template for the persistent volume claim which will be created for each pod so this would be the name of the volume which we are mounting in the container at this path and the access mode is read write once and this is the storage class name that we created in the last chapter with which the persistent volume is created and we are requesting for 1 GB storage and pretty much everything else is same as deployment. I'll be attaching the links for the stateful sets in the description of this video so that you can go through it. Now let's go back to the terminal and apply the changes. kubectl apply iphone f stateful set dot yaml. Let's run this and immediately list down the pods. Enter and I'm listing the pods. As you can see, the pods are creating one by one. Here, iPhone W is used to watch the pod status changes. If you observe carefully, first Mongo0 went into the container creating state, later it was running, and next Mongo1 pod was getting created, and finally Mongo2 pod was getting created, and finally it went into the running state. And now let's try to scale up the stateful set and see the same behavior. To scale up, either we can go to the stateful set YAML and change this number of replicas, or we can directly do it with kubectl command. kubectl scale stateful set STS is the short name for the stateful set, and stateful set name is Mongo. And let's give the replicas as seven. Enter and watch the pod changes. As you can see. Initially, three pods were running, and later Mongo 3 pod was getting created, and next Mongo 4 and Mongo 5, finally, seventh pod, which is Mongo 6. And as we discussed in the theory, the pod naming convention is stateful set name, which is Mongo, hyphen, and ordinal index, which will be incremented for each pod. So Mongo 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now let's try to scale down and see what happens. So let's scale down back to 3, enter and watch the pod changes. As you can see, the pods are getting deleted one by one. And the first pod that gets deleted is the last pod, that is the pod with the highest ordinal index. And now we have only 3 pods. And now let us try to delete the pod and see if the same name is given to the pod. So clear the screen, kubectl delete pod mongo-0. Enter and list down the pods. As you can see, the pod with the same name is created one second back. So, with this, we can confirm that a sticky identity is given to each pod. Also, let us try to confirm that each pod is using a separate persistent volume. So, let's try to list down the persistent volume claims. UCPL get PVC. As you can see, there are six persistent volume claims which are created by demo storage storage class and the status of all these persistent volume claims are bound to a separate persistent volume. You might be wondering when we have only three pods why there are seven persistent volume claims. This is because when we increase the number of replicas to seven, the seven persistent volumes are created but when we delete the pods, persistent volumes claims will not be deleted. And also, when we restarted the Mongo-0 pod, the same Mongo-0 persistent volume claim will be used by the Mongo-0 pod. We can confirm by describing the pod, kubectl describe pod Mongo-0 and let's graph for volume. As you can see, Mongo-1 volume, iPhone Mongo-0 persistent volume claim is used. So this is what sticky storage means. So as we discussed, to talk to a specific pod, we need a headless service. So let us try to create that headless service. So let's go back to VS Code and create a new file, headless service.yaml. So this is just like any other service. Please refer to the services section of this series for the detailed explanation on the service manifest files. And our pods are running on 27,017 port and these are the pod labels. So let's go back to the terminal and apply the service. kubectl apply iphone f headless service.yaml. As you can see, the service is created. 
we can verify that with kubectl get service so this is the service that we created and the cluster ip is none so please note that headless services cannot be accessed directly from outside of the cluster so now let us try to create the mongodb replica set so as we have three pods we should able to specify a specific pod as the master node and the others are the slave nodes please note that stateful set just manages your pods it doesn't create the replication for you the replication has to be done by ourselves so for that let's get into the pod kubectl exec iphone it and let's get into the mongo iphone 0 pod and let's run mongo command so now we are in the mongo iphone 0 pod so as per the official documentation of mongodb this is how we initiate the replica set here this is the replica set name that we gave in the stateful set and this is the dns of our pod 0 and pod 1 dns and pod 2 dns so let's try to execute the same command as you can see this rs0 is the replica set name that we gave in the stateful set and this is the host of the mongo iphone 0 pod where mongo iphone 0 is the pod name mongo is the service name and default is the namespace like that we are giving the dns of three pods enter as you can see now the replica set is initiated let's exit and get into the pod again as you can see now the node is changed to the primary node we can verify that with rs dot status if we observe here this is the primary node and this is the secondary node and the third one is also labeled as secondary node and after the initial clone all the slaves will be in sync with the primary node now let us try to create a simple database with a simple collection in the primary node and verify if the same data is replicated in the slaves so let's go to the test database and this is the mongo shell command to create a todos collection now one record is inserted we can verify that with db dot to do's dot find as you can see this is the record that we inserted now let's exit from this primary node and log into the secondary node mongo iphone 1 and now let us try to list the same collection as you can see there is some error this means this node is not set up to perform the reads to enable the reads all we need is rs dot slave ok this is one time job now let us do the same thing as you can see the data is replicated to the slave one from the primary node and this data transfer took place with the help of headless service so this is how pods in the stateful set communicate with each other for the data replication i hope you found the stateful set very helpful for your stateful set needs my name is Pawan Tapu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.